What is going on? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. Good morning. Um, it's about 5 a.m. I am all the way upstate, almost on the border of Canada, all the way upstate in New York. Um, I am near uh, Lake Erie. And the reason why, so I got in late last night and I'm in a cabin now and I'll show you guys all this stuff uh, when it's a little bit lighter out so that you can get a real appreciation for it. It's really beautiful. Um, but whenever I thought about like salmon fishing or steelhead trout or any of those things, what comes to mind is Alaska. Um, and that's what I always thought that's where salmon was. And I had heard that you could catch salmon in New York and it just, it blew my mind. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I couldn't, I just, it, it couldn't make sense of it. So I started Googling, started doing research and sure enough, you can get king salmon, coho salmon, uh, steelhead trout, giant brown trout, um, and there's one company that kept coming up in the Google searches, uh, Salmon River Guides. So I got in touch with Shane and uh, asked if I could come up and, and do some salmon fishing. So I did the five-hour drive. Like I said, got in late last night, uh, got into my cabin, went to sleep. It's 5 a.m. now. Shane's son is going to take me out today. And we're gonna go for actually steelhead. So when it gets lighter outside, I'll show you the grounds and uh, I'll see you out on the water. Uh, Shane's son David is setting up the boat, getting everything ready. Rods and reels, it's about 26 degrees out. Um, but interesting fact that I just learned, the colder the air, uh, the more dense the air, so it sits lower. So the colder it is, you actually have less um, cloud coverage, so you get more sun. So it'll be a nice, bright, sunny day out there on the river. So I'm looking forward to that. Let me show you the, uh, the cabin, the spot is amazing, really amazing. Got uh, four beds there, two twins, two uh, queens. Couch, TV. Bathroom set up. Pretty nice, pretty nice. A little kitchen. Everything you need. A little toaster oven, coffee maker. But there you go. And when I tell you that this is affordable, holy smokes. Now, the only thing you have to contest is the weather, but uh, we got a nice little window. And if you watch it, you know, it's a little unpredictable with those winds coming off Canada and the lake, but uh, I think I hit two days. Oh, that's right. I'm doing two days here. So we're really going to try um, for a steelhead. Fingers crossed. No promises. If not, I'll cook you guys something else. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. But I just want to take you along and show you this because my mind is blown that I'm going to fish for steelhead trout right now in the state of New York. Um, you know, call me naive, but it's, uh, it's something special and I am very excited right now. You got a fish on? You got a fish on? <laughs> All right, so we're anchored on the, uh, we're on the Salmon River, yeah? Oh yeah. Okay, up all right. Altmar, New York. <laughs> we're in the upper stretch, currently in the barrel. Well, tell me who you are. I'm David Thomas. <laughs> I'm a fishing guy, Salmon River guy. That's the name of our outfitters. We, uh, we got lodging, we get trips from year round, pretty much. You know, all right. We fish the river September through May. And we're out in the lake from April through October. And then what are we fishing for today? Uh, today we're fishing for steelhead. We'll be drifting mostly beads. 
feed. We'll be doing some back trolling with some hot shots and uh, quick fish. Okay, and what are the regulations? Uh, you're allowed one fish. It's got to be 25 inches and one a day, one a person. Okay. That's it. All right, we might limit out quick and head home. It's freezing. <laughs> 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 Fingers crossed. Hopefully. That's the plan. <laughs> Alright, so yes. Yeah, so if you hook up with one. Hold on tight. <laughs> um, let them run. It's a marathon, not a sprint. We're using lighter line. And we're fishing heavy water right now. And it's cranking by us pretty quick here. Yeah. Hook one, just let them do what the fish wants to do. It's not a bass or anything. You're not going to just wrench them in. It's, you know, you're going to get a good fight out of them. Sometimes gotcha. we got to pull the anchor and go after them. You know, just get into that current and they'll use their body weight you know, for the good one. Okay. So, and how big is a keeper? 25? 25 inches, yeah. So that's a good fish. It's about 5 pounds. Okay. You know, every inch up from there is generally about a pound. So like a 30 inch or just, we consider it probably a 10 pound fish. You know, it's healthy and normal. Okay. Last few time the sun's been high. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so we've been at it how long? An hour? <laughs> For a little while. We've had a couple of takedowns, but no, haven't connected with anything yet. So David was saying we might uh, head downstream a bit, then loop around and come back up and do another drift down. He said uh, there's one boat at the top of the river here that was kind of parked on like the spot. So just got to wait everyone out. What do you think? Yeah, wait, wait. <laughs> pull some lures through some spots here. Maybe put a fish or two in the boat and we'll do it again. <laughs> all Hopefully right. by then all the crowds will be cleared out. And... There we go. Yeah. All right, we're on. Uh, I think I might cross this line here. I'm not on yet. We got one that was 65, and we got one that was 100. All right, and this too, I don't want to horse them, yeah? Yeah. Get right to that beat. Keep working it up this way. Keep swinging it up the boat. I don't want to pull on them too hard there. You good? <laughs> Come back with it nice and slow and then reel down to the fish. Come back, kind of let the rod come back on its own, and then reel down to the fish. Oh, yep, work them away from the oar there. There we go. The old bobber plug. <laughs> I'm not sure that one's 25 or not. Uh, it doesn't look it, but... You can get a picture of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, so they got to be 25. I don't think we got 25, but... Yeah, he's a little close for comfort. But hey, at least we got a fish on. We got to see one. Yeah. <laughs> we can edit that part out. <laughs> I got a bunch. Right. I think I got a video of it. You send it. Yep. Take it easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good change. <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. Yeah, good thing you. Good thing you also caught the knot in the line on this one yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> the initial run of these guys is so sick. Up 
<laughs> that one's 25. That's so definitely 25. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Are we keeping this one? <laughs> I, I would say so. I think we're keeping that one. <laughs> what it, does he have uh he's got somebody else's hooking him, yeah? Oh yeah, that ain't ours. Huh. There you go. Sorry to whoever lost it. <laughs> Alright, so I we haven't been out that long. We were just drifting down. But uh getting down to some of the better stuff. Well, Dave, Dave, Dave was on it, and he was switching out lures, switching out lures, just to see what they want and when they want it. And man, it worked. <laughs> we got, we got our keeper. That's probably a 33-inch fish. Oh, that I is got a, a tape right here. So that's a, that's cool. a beautiful fish. We'll do it when we get down. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. And for those of you that don't know, steelhead trout, it's going to be orange, kind of like salmon. Uh, cooks up pretty much the same as salmon and in my opinion from the steelhead that I've had I like it even more than salmon but uh, we're gonna brain and bleed and uh, head on down the river got my my New York salmon river steelhead I couldn't be happier right now this is amazing it's absolutely amazing <laughs> thank you David yeah no problem it's <laughs> a close up on that thing that tail, that tail is beautiful. It's a gorgeous fish. And they haven't turned, so when they're spawning is when they get those crazy... Yeah, that one looks on. like he might have spawned at one point in his life. I don't okay. know, it's hard to say. That one definitely hasn't spawned this year at least. Sometimes they'll spawn, they'll go back to the lake and then they'll return and spawn again. Oh, okay. You know, they're right. not like the salmon where they die, they spawn multiple times. Thirty-two and a half. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just want to see him. Put him in the oar. I know he's big. Wow, he's big. That'll get you excited. Wow. In the dorsal? And you landed him? <laughs> Don't thumb it. If anything, easy. It's best. <laughs> now you can come back a little harder and further. Now reel right down. And then just keep bending it up now. Bending it up, bending it up. Up, bending it. <laughs> Give me a little line. Give yep. me a little line. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Are you keeping him or you let him go? What's that? Oh, uh, we'll let him go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it as quick as possible, man. That thing is massive. 30 something inches. I don't know if it's as big as the one you had yesterday. It's big enough. Definitely big enough. It's a 10 pounder. Whew. All day long. Squeeze <laughs> the tail. Okay. All right. There we go. We did it. We got you. One. <laughs> All right. So I'm pretty much gonna put the camera away for the day because we're just doing uh, catch and release. But that was a good fish and a really fun fight. I missed probably about five minutes of that fight, but. I want to introduce you to the owner of Salmon Fishing Guides salmon and the River. Salmon, I'm sorry, Salmon River Guides. SalmonRiverGuide.com. <laughs> uh, Shane Thomas here. How you doing? <laughs> now, how long you been in business? 34 years. 34 years. Full time, it's all I do. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so if you come up here, I'm going to put all the information down below. I showed you guys the lodge and uh, yesterday David is actually uh shane's son so family run business and uh you guys will walk away happy that's for sure so like i said next time you see me we'll be in the kitchen all right we're back on long island uh grabbing the fish out of the cooler bring it in the back and we'll fillet it um 
A couple of things I want to clarify. One, Shane's company is called SalmonRiverGuide.com. Uh, check them out. Like I said, I'm going to put the information down below. But, uh, you know, there are guides and then there are guides. And uh, what I mean by that is that there are guys who start the clock and you just go and whatever happens, happens. They let you fish. They don't really help. And then there's guys like Shane and his son who, uh, I don't know if you can hear me with the, <laughs> the wheeling, but there's guys like Shane and his son who, they're not going by the clock. They're going by your experience. And, uh, you know, they want to put you on a fish. They're out there having fun. I mean, when uh, I left David, he went back out and went fishing. Um, Shane's been doing it for 35 years. And, uh, you know, the guy's got a lot of knowledge and they're there to make sure that you have the best uh, experience of your life and they do it ethically. One of the things that Shane told me was that this year um, he could count on one hand how many fish they kept. Uh, you know, they're just, they're doing it right and they're good guys. So he deserves me to pronounce the uh, name of his company correctly, which is SalmonRiverGuide.com. Uh, the other thing is, I think I said Pulaski, New York. That's because here in New York, we have the Pulaski Bridge. Well, if you're from up there, you pronounce it Pulaski. And I don't want to anger anybody about that. And then I think at 5 a.m. in the morning when my brain wasn't quite working, I might have said that we were by Lake Erie. We were by Lake Ontario. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was pretty out of it, to say the least. But let's get to filleting this fish. It'll be my first steelhead that I've ever filleted in my life. So... We'll take this adventure together. So I went ahead and gutted this guy. And in here, when after you take the guts out, it's the uh, kidney that runs all along there. So I cut that out, cleaned him out, took his gills out, because we're going to keep the collar. We're actually going to keep the head as well. Um, and when these guys get older like this, the meat can tend to be a little bit light. Um, which is why a lot of people don't keep them up there, but it just means that the fish is a little older. Look how awesome this tail is. <laughs> My gosh, such a cool fish. Really, really beautiful. And uh, as David was saying, you can tell that it has spawned once because it's starting to turn there. And this is a male. Um, like salmon, salmon spawn and then die. These guys can spawn a couple of times. So he's starting to get that real crazy jaw on him. So these guys can be a little bit tricky with filleting. Most people cut and then go all the way down. Um, I personally don't have the confidence in doing that right now. So I'm going to fillet it the way that I know how. And we're just going to move slow and easy and uh, try not to go to the other side. And worst case scenario, we scrape the rack and make some uh, steelhead cakes. So. Any which way, the whole fish is getting used, so I'm all right if I botch the uh, filleting just a little bit, but let's get started. So put a towel underneath. Um, you guys are pretty slimy, and hopefully that'll keep them from uh, moving too much on me now. The skin on these guys is pretty thick. And as you can see there, you know, it's not that bright, bright orange. It's just a little bit faded, but that's okay. I just want to get them started so that I can see where that rib cage is so that I don't, uh, don't go the wrong way here. Then I'm not gonna cut all the way through and that'll make my life easier because I'm gonna flip them over and actually use this filet to uh, keep them kind of straight for when I do the other side. So there you go. Now I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this filet pretty much intact now so that I can flip it over and do the other side. And all this little bit that I missed here that's actually the ribs. There's hardly any meat there, but I'm gonna cut down and get the uh, the belly off of this. But we're gonna take a spoon 
and scrape all of that there to get that out but it's actually very pretty very very good and a uh, big shout out to David for uh, believing this guy that meat's actually looking pretty pristine <laughs> birds are angry uh, one of the other things I just want to show you is taking out those pin bones without uh, without cutting them out so with pliers pull each one out like that and it's a little time consuming but I actually don't mind and I like using a plier with a uh, wider flat instead of needle nose because needle nose you can just kind of break them off and lose them in there but yeah that's it so I'm gonna work my way down and pull each of those out they go to about here so right about where uh, the anal fin would be on that fish so all my pin bones are out and uh, it beats up the meat just a little bit there but I would rather that than uh, cutting a big strip out you just feel with your finger there we go and then about the size of my hand will be the size of each portion There's our, our piece of steelhead trout. And then I'm going to leave this tail piece just as is. I, the more I look at this, I'm actually pretty, uh, pretty content with that. That is beautiful. It's not super bright orange, but it's not, uh, it's not too pale either. It's pretty, pretty good. That's going to cook up beautifully I actually wanted to test it out because like I said I've never filleted one of these and the way that I filleted the other piece is how I fillet most most fish so this one I wanted to try I ended up taking that fillet off and this side I wanted to try like I've seen where people just run the, uh, the blade all the way down I mean it's definitely faster but I feel like it's gonna leave yeah I mean it definitely leaves a bit on the uh, on the fish there but there's your fillet that's not bad I was just nervous to do it the first time because I've never done it that way before but I like it. Looks good. All right. <laughs> I'm going to clean this one up. Same thing. I'm going to pull all those pin bones out. And, uh, and then we're going to scrape the, uh, the rack with the spoon to get any of the, the meat left behind off. And start vacuum sealing some of this up. And this little, little guy right here. I've seen these clean so many different ways too. But what I want to say is, you know, of course, you want to get the most uh, the most yield out of a fish, obviously. But if you don't practice and you don't try new ways, you'll never learn. So I'm glad that I did that, and it looks uh, looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, we're gonna make 
miso marinated cod. So I have cooking sake. And you want to put these in a warm pot and bring it up to a boil because you want to cook off the alcohol. So about two cups. And then this is mirin, which is Japanese cooking wine. So about equal parts to the sake. And we'll bring that to a boil, cook off all the alcohol, and then we'll add the miso paste. So the way to tell if all the alcohol is burned off is you wave it up and when you breathe it in, if it burns your nose a little bit, the alcohol is still coming out. When that stops, all the alcohol is burned off. Okay, so now that all the alcohol is burned off, I don't smell anything. We're gonna turn, put that down to low. And now I'm gonna add my miso paste, which is fermented soybeans. So you're pretty much adding equal parts of everything. So that was maybe two cups of sake, two cups of mirin, and now we're gonna do two cups of miso paste. We could actually turn that heat all the way off so that we don't burn the miso. You just want to mix it until it's completely dissolved. Now that the miso is dissolved, we're going to add a little bit of sugar. And what the sugar will do is help caramelize when we bake our trout and give it that nice brown crust on it. So I'm gonna turn that heat back up, make sure the sugar is dissolved, and then we're gonna take this off the heat and let it cool completely. So while that's cooling, I just wanna show you, I, I think I, I kinda talked a little smack about the color of these, but they are, it's pretty amazing. It's not that pale. I don't know why I thought it was was a little pale, but that's absolutely beautiful uh, orange color on there. While my uh, coals are getting hot for the um, the trout, I'm gonna prep what's gonna be our side dish. So here I have just some uh, baby bok choy that I'm gonna quarter. And then some absolutely gorgeous uh, king oyster mushrooms. These are amazing. Um, smaller ones, we'll just throw them in. Then the larger ones we'll cut into slices. And here I just have a little bit of garlic. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna put these, uh, if we're gonna saute them or if we have room, put them on the uh, barbecue as well. But I'll throw some garlic there just in case. All right, now let's prep our trout. We are almost ready on those coals. And for those of you that don't know, uh, I usually talk about it on the channel. The starter that I used here is uh, Starter King, and all their info is in my uh, bio, but absolutely incredible product. There's no lighter fluid on this or anything, and I didn't use a chimney, and that's almost ready to go. So what I'm gonna do with these is actually skewer them because there's so much sugar content. I mean, we added sugar, but there's sugar in the mirin. The sake is sweet. I have a feeling if I put them onto the grill directly, they are going to stick. So what I'm going to do is skewer them so we can hang them just above the grill. And I think that'll work out much more in our favor. I think for right now we'll just do we'll just do those three. 
All right, while my coals are getting ready, I decided we will do the, uh, the veg in a saute pan. Get the garlic going right away. I'm actually gonna put these in even before the pan is hot. A little bit of salt on them. Now I don't wanna cook these to death. I just wanna brown them a little bit and cook them through. Oh, that's perfection right there, that little guy. That, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna keep them moving. I got pretty much a medium low heat on here just so that I don't uh, scorch my garlic. This is what I'm looking for. I'm gonna pull these and do the next batch and then we'll do, oh yes, that. That right there, absolutely gorgeous. A bit of black pepper. So with the next batch done, I'm gonna move them down. And if you haven't noticed, I'm holding the pan, so this area of the pan is off the heat, even though the entire pan is getting hot really this is just warm and this is going to be my my cooking surface so push those aside just a little bit more oil and in with our baby bok choy a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper Is actually perfect timing because my coals look a-okay so what I have here is actually a little bit of sake that we were drinking the other day <laughs> and pour that in and this is just a little bit of rice vinegar not too much Turn the heat off that, let's go put our trout on. So as you can see, I built this little contraption using the other skewers because I want that trout above the flame there. And in a little bit, we'll flip it over, but I want it to cook this way. With all that sugar, that would have stuck to that grate and it would have been a nightmare. So this way, we can get cooked through, flip them over, we're doing good. So I lifted it off, and now go back on. We definitely got a little bit of char there, but we'll just peel that skin off. I'm not too worried about that. These coals were so hot, but you want that uh, trout cooked all the way through because it's a freshwater fish. And a little bit of char on that side's not bad. I'm just hoping when it cooks through, we don't lose it into the uh, grill. But that's why I only did three pieces because I've never done this like this, so I wanted to, to test it out. But yeah, that skin because of the sugar and the heat off the grill, that went up fast. But that is okay, I'm more concerned about the fish. So the other thing I wanna point out, I mean, you can see how red hot that is. That coal is burning so, so hot. I actually moved it off to the sides, so it's gonna go a little bit slower on that side. But that is okay. While that's finishing up, plate our mushroom and bok choy. All right, I'm gonna grab the trout off of the grill. Flip it over to the nice side. See, that's what I was looking for. Just a bit of browning, not, uh, not black. But yeah, that, that is gorgeous. Make sure we're cooked all the way through. Okay. breaking apart that's a good thing which means it's all the way cooked through 
All right, guys, get ready. I have your favorite here, Mom Hi. Clans. Happy holidays. <laughs> All right, she's, you can have the first bite there. So it's king oyster mushrooms, bok choy, and then miso glazed trout. Okay, from? From Salmon River, New York. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't get the skin, the skin, uh, the skin know, was a casualty. Heard the crunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I'm just but we're more concerned that this. looks cooked perfectly. Mm. Oh my! I don't know what spices you put on here, but it has a sweetness to it. It's miso glazed. Very nice. So the miso, the miso is a little bit sweet, a little bit salty. The mirin is a little bit sweet. The sake is a little bit sweet. And then we put just a couple not of overly. No, it's, it's just, just enough. It's sweet, and I don't taste salty at all, truthfully. Beautiful. <laughs> um, that is cooked really nice, actually. So like I said, the outside, the coals were a little hot, so I lost the skin on this, which I really love. But Fish is delicious. It's so tender. All right, I'm going to go in for my own piece here. Really nice. Mm. All right, I'm going in for the bok choy. Bok choy, mm. okay, okay. I'm going in for a mushroom. Nice and crunchy. Mmm. Have a mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the nice thing about this, the the miso glazed, either you can do salmon, cod, or trout is that you can cool it down and then break it up and eat it cold over salads. It's actually a great thing to prep a bunch of and uh, most fish, it's not the best cold, but this is actually very good after it cools down. It's almost like smoked fish. Mm. I'm happy with that. It's so tender and flavorful. <laughs> very, very nice. Well, really delicious. Now here's how you know it's good as well. She's on her way out to go to dinner and she hasn't stopped eating. <laughs> so I know we got a home run here. It's pretty good. But all right, guys, thanks for coming on this adventure. Shane, David, thank you so much. SalmonRiverGuy.com. Those guys, man, thank you. My mom thanks you <laughs> for being such good guides and such good guys. Um, but this is really, really, really delicious. It doesn't look that pretty now that we've been picking at it, but all right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Oh, this is so good, Will. <laughs>